Hey everyone and welcome to another Drift Outfitters ice fishing uh, fly tying tutorial. This is going to be a real treat today. We're going to tie the original Simcoe bug as well as a few variations of it. If you aren't from the area or aren't an ice angler, you might not be familiar with it, but this thing has become pretty ubiquitous with uh, Lake Simcoe perch, but then also just panfish as a whole in all range of different uh, lakes. Definitely one you want to have on Simcoe though. So this is the original. It's kind of a wacky looking fly. It's uh, meant to be sort of a, a grub or a scud or some kind of invertebrate uh, imitation and really good on perch. It's usually fished in tandem with uh, something like a spoon uh, as a sort of a follow-up bait almost. But you can fish it by itself as well depending on how you tie it. So show you the original first then we'll, we'll go through a couple alternatives as well. This is what we'll tie it on. This is a C49S Mustad in a size 8 so a curved caddis hook you can just tie this on a regular old nymph hook too though. And you can tie this in a, a good range of sizes. I would say anywhere from a size six to a 10, maybe even a 12. The bugs can be smaller than that, but bigger will probably get more attention from the fish. And uh, so for thread on this, it's really quite a simple tie. I've just got uh, some big fly thread here in a, a red from Uni. Uh, before we tie that in though, we're gonna put down a base of wire. This fly, doesn't really have much weight to it. And so uh, just to help get down and keep better touch with the fly, I've got some 025 lead wire here. I'm gonna go ahead and put down a pretty solid base of that. So just wrapping it up the shank. And I'm going to leave a little gap just before the eye here, a few turns worth and break off my tag end and break off the back tag as well. So I've got, if I push those wraps together, you can see a little gap there and a little space behind that before the bend as well. So I'm going to take that big fly thread. You don't have to use big fly, but I'd suggest you use something thick. So maybe a Viva's power thread or something similar. And the top color does seem to be a yellow and, and a red uh, out there, but you can do this in all range of different colors. I'm going to start this up at the eye like so. And I'm just going to take that thread back down over the wire to kind of lock it in place like so. Doesn't have to be perfect touching turns, just enough to lock it in. And for the body, it's really just a one material fly from here. And what we're gonna be using is some, uh, some Antron yarn. In this case, this is just a yellow Antron yarn. It comes in a card like that. You can use different yarns, but I like Antron because it does have like a nice translucency and sheen to it. So I've taken a, a length, I've taken a pretty long length here. Um, you're going to need it to be able to really bulk up this fly to where you'd like. So just catch that in toward the front here. I'm going to tie it all the way down to the back. We're going to tie down the bend of this hook just a little bit. Okay. You can take that yarn now and just start wrapping it up. Now Antron does have a tendency to sort of flatten out and sometimes split on you as you're wrapping and get a little hard to handle. So if that happens, you can just twist it up a little bit and it'll uh, be a little bit more manageable for you to use. So the first round here, we're just going over the body once. It doesn't have to be too thick or anything special. You can see at the front here, it's starting to get a little wide on me. So I'm just gonna twist it up a little bit and that'll make it just a little more manageable for me as I go back down. As I go back down, I'm going to start trying to bulk things up just a little bit. So you'll see me go back and forth over this midsection. Just try and give it that real grubby kind of profile. And when I get back to where my thread was, cross over, give it a few good tight wraps. Now, since I'm tying down the bend here, sometimes the thread will have a tendency to slip off the back. So what I'll do is I'll just rotate my vise to the side, just so that the thread doesn't slip. I find it easier for the step to do that. Now what I am going to do with this vise turner, you won't be able to see it, is I'm just gonna trim this tag in nice and close. So come in here, snip that off. Now you can come in and just tighten up, tidy up those wraps, or the butt ends rather, a little bit. At this point, you can go ahead and actually build up a little bit of a butt, sort of a red butt on this thing. It's kind of strange, but it works. That is the original. Now I'm gonna use this thread to rib the fly as well. That's why we want a fairly heavy thread. And when I wrap up, I'm gonna space out my wraps a little bit. 
I'm gonna wrap pretty loosely. Otherwise, sometimes the thread will dig down into this yarn and uh, sort of get hidden. So I'm shooting for probably about five, six turns going up the body. And then at the front, we're gonna build up a bit of a red head again as well. It's a nice kind of hot spot here. Just like so. You can throw in a whip finish at this point. That's basically us done. Just gonna move this up a little. And we're gonna coat this for durability and some sort of translucency in uh, a UV resin. So this is a solar res in the thin viscosity. The thin is really nice to work with for this kind of a purpose. The um, bone dry is too thin, the thick is too thick, it's hard to disperse evenly. The thin stuff's just too watery and uncontrollable. So I'm just, just gonna take a, a decent dollop of this. Be pretty generous. Throw that on top. If it starts dripping, you can just turn the vise to control it. I'm just gonna take my bodkin here and use it to kind of spread out that glue. I might have gone a little overboard here. It would be easier to control with a smaller amount at a time. You can always add as you go. But this is about the amount that you want for this fly. It's, it's a pretty healthy amount. And this will make this fly pretty well bomb proof. You can see there's a cool kind of translucency that comes through when you do that. I'm just going to rotate this a couple times to sort of even it out, more or less, and then I'm going to hit it with my UV light. And I'll just lock it in place. And that's basically it right there. So sort of a, a scud, grub, maggot, not quite sure what, just something buggy looking. And uh, the perch absolutely love it. Really good for bluegill, really good for crappie, anything like that, especially if there's weeds around where all these sort of bugs and invertebrates could be living in. So that's your classic Simcoe bug. Now, let's fast forward a bit. Let's tie a more modern version, which might look something a little more like this. Lots of different ways you can take this again but uh, this is just sort of the, the base for it and then you can mix it up however you like. So in this case, we're tying a weighted one, you'll see. So the hook that I have going here, it's actually a steelhead hook. It's a Raven Specimen Wide Gape and a number six. It's so pretty big. And uh, for the bead, this is a five and a half millimeter uh, tungsten bead in copper. Five and a half mil, this thing is massive. It gives you a lot of weight. The thing that's kind of lacking with the original Simcoe bug is that it doesn't have enough weight to fish by itself. You need to fish it with something else. So this will allow you to fish it by itself. And for the body, again, we're gonna use some wire. I've just got some, this is lead-free wire, but use whatever you like. A fairly thick wire, again, to sort of lock that bead in place and build up some taper like we did with the last one. I'm not going to need as many turns here because it's a shorter shank and uh, most of the shank's already been covered up by the bead, but probably about four or five turns and then you can wind that wire to break it off on either side. There we go. And just jam that wire up into the back of the bead. That'll hold it in place. I'm gonna switch out my threads here. For this fly, I'm going to use a tan thread. This is a, a Vivas, a little bit thinner, you'll see. Um, just because we don't need to bulk things up quite as much or use it as a rib. So this is an dot. Just any sort of color to match the, um, the, the color fly you're going for. This will show through a little bit. And similar to the last one, I just start my thread behind the wire and then go over it a couple times to lock it in place. Trim off the excess. Now the key to this version of the fly is this stuff. It's nymph skin. It's cool material, it's a, it's a latex material. You can get it in two sizes, a three millimeter or a 4.6 millimeter. Either one will work for this fly. I've got the three mil with me today. And uh, this is the, I believe they call it natural color. So it's sort of a tannish yellow. Again, very reminiscent of the original Simca bug. Uh, they do make translucent versions that give you a cool kind of sh uh, shine through effect as well though. And what I'm gonna do is just catch this in right behind the bead like so. I'm gonna start tying it down the, the full length of the body. And as I start getting further back here, I'm going to pull and stretch this material a little bit to thin it out, which will help taper down the body toward the back here. So I'm coming right back around that 
bend a good ways down, and then I'll reverse my thread and start taking it back up to the bead. I'm going to take that, I'm going to start wrapping it. So starting just where it ended, I'm going to give it a little bit of tension here, pull it, stretch it again, try and thin it out slightly for the first wrap. And these wraps are going to overlap each other. The first couple wraps might overlap each other less. And then as I work my way forward, I'm going to back off that tension. And I'm also going to start overlapping them maybe a little bit more, more frequently. And that will help sort of ramp up the taper as we go forward here. Taking it right up to the bead head. One more for good luck. And then you can just tie it off. Get a few good tight turns on there. And this material to get us a nice clean cut, I'm just going to stretch it and pull up tight. And when I cut it, it'll snap back down and be a very flush, clean cut for us. So that's basically it. I'll just throw on a quick whip finish there. Now you can use that same red thread that we had on the, uh, the last fly. Or if you want something with maybe a little more pop, you can consider using something like a glow bright floss. So I'm going to throw this in my bobbin. And I'm just going to tie a little bit of a collar here. So I'm going to come in back here, just make a few turns, build up a little bit of a collar. And you can adjust this or omit it completely uh, to your liking. This does give a nice bit of pop if you're out, say, on a dark day, if you have a lot of snow on the ice where there's limited light penetration into the water, or if you, um, say, are fishing in maybe a weedier area where you have a lot of um, you know, debris floating in the water. This can help make it stand out a little bit more. So you'll see I'm not overdoing it, just enough to give a little band of color back there, throw on a whip finish, and, uh, and that's basically the fly. Again, we're going to coat it in that same resin, and this again will help with the durability. It'll give it a little bit more weight, uh, give it sort of a translucent kind of effect on the outer edges. Lots of good things. So again, a pretty liberal amount. I'm just trying to get a nice thin, even coating over the entire body and going all the way back so that the resin touches the shank of the hook here. That will help sort of seal in the entire fly to really make sure it's locked in. Like so again, you can spin that a couple of times just to even it all out. Hit that with our light. Of course, you can do this with epoxy or resin. It just takes longer. Or lacquer, I should say. Resin is probably the easiest way to do it. Just like that. And so that's kind of your more modern version. Uh, again, you can see very grubby, sort of maggoty kind of look. Um, a lot more weight here. So if you want to jig this by itself, you'll actually be able to feel the fly. Whereas with, you know, that original Simcoe bug, you know, without the use of a jig or something fished in tandem, it'd be very hard to feel what's going on. So this you can fish by itself and still do really well. I'm going to show you a third option here. This is a little bit of a departure. It's not so resemblant of that original Simcoe bug, but it serves the same purpose and gives you an option for a little bit more of a natural look. So this is basically just a scud turned into an ice fishing jig. And for the hook, we're going to use that same hook that we just used. So again, that specimen wide gape from Raven in a size six. Again, you could play around with the sizing. I'm going to tie this one with a little bit of a smaller bead, but you could do the same five and a half millimeter. This is going to be a gold bead. Again, you can play around with color as much as you like there. In terms of colors that are going to show up best, silver is typically your brightest color. So if you're really looking at drawing in fish, it might be worth a shot. If you're looking uh, you know, for something a little more drab, copper, gold is great. And if you really want a natural one, then you know, maybe a black uh, can, can really have its day for sure and give you a nice contrast point too. So I'm going to go back and just string it up a bobbin here with my tan thread again. Oh, so that was the tan ADOT Vivas. And again, just to lock this bead in, we're going to use a little bit of that wire here. 
Again, not too many wraps, just a few to help build up the taper here and lock that bead in. Jam that up in there, break off this back end. There we go. All right, make sure it's pushed well up in there. Then we'll start that thread just behind that lead, like so. If anything, you can build up a little bit of a taper behind that lead, but it's not very important. Snip that off. Now, the first thing we're gonna tie on, and this one is actually uh, something we're gonna use to rib it. So this is just a bit of mono thread, uh, but it is just mono line. So nylon, fluoro, whatever you wanna use. Something in like a four pound or four X kind of range should, should be about right. Something fairly thin. And we're just going to catch that in, tying it in on the side. Take that back down the bend. Again, we're gonna go pretty far down the bend on this fly. Just like so. Now, this one's gonna have a bit of a shell back. So that's gonna be made with this stuff. This is a thin skin. So it's kind of like that latex we were using in the last one, except you'll see it's translucent and a lot thinner. It's really thin. So this is great for, for scud backs. And I'm just going to cut a strip out of it. Not huge, maybe, I don't know, three sixteenths of an inch wide, something like that. So similar to our bead, like so. I'm gonna take my thread back up to the bead and I'm going to catch this in right on top, trying to make it just dead center on top of the fly here, like so. Once that's caught in, I'll pull back on this to give it a little bit of tension, stretch it out a little, and, oops, got a little nick in my material, but that's fine. We'll just keep on going over that, make sure it gets tied down well. There we go. Bring that all the way down to where our mono was tied in. Okay, just like so. Now, to get the leggy kind of effect, the more natural, more movement rich kind of effect, this is ice dub in a tan. You can use lots of different dubbings. The key thing is that they have sort of a, a medium long fiber length and ideally are somewhat soft and translucent. So ice dub is great. You can use hairs ear dubbing or other things like that. Seal would work. Just want to avoid things that are gonna dub too tight and not allow you to pluck them out after the fact. So I'm gonna take a sparse pinch of this stuff and dub it quite loose. Not trying to dub a dry fly body here. Just try to keep this stuff fairly loose. So just rolling that onto my thread like so. I'm gonna start by tying this on right where that scud back was tied in, right at the very back. Taking my dubbing up and if anything, just adding a little bit of taper, a little additional thickness as I work up toward the bead here. So you can see it's a pretty scruffy looking body. I like the tan because it's almost translucent once it gets picked out. I think it's a really nice subtle look. You could use other colors for sure. So we've got that built up, that's our body. Now what we're gonna do is gonna pull this thin skin right over the back. I should say if you want to use something like scud back, that would work well for this fly too. So I'm pulling that over the top, trying to keep it directly on top of the fly, like so. And while holding that stretched and pulled taut with my right hand, I'm just going to flip my bobbin over to catch that in. A couple good tight wraps over top, and then I'll pull this tag end back and slip my thread in front. And you can come in then, just closely trim off the excess, like so. So now you can see we have that back to it. And if you think about a, a scud, is basically a little freshwater shrimp. So this is just like the, the shell on a shrimp. You can think of it that way. Now, just to wrap things up, we're gonna take that little bit of mono line that we tied in to start, and we're gonna start ribbing over top of that shell back with this. Just evenly spaced turns and really pulling pretty tight on it so it bites in. This is gonna do two things. For one, you can see we're starting to get some segmentation going. It'll make it look like there are different little plates on the scud's back. But more importantly, it's gonna add durability to the fly. 
just binds everything down really well. Put a few good, good tight turns on top of that and we'll come in and snip off the excess. We'll whip finish that. Now again, if you wanted to add a little bit of contrast, some sort of a hot spot on this, you could just take your red thread or floss again, whatever you like, and just put a couple turns there and that would work great. I'll keep this one natural. And to finish this off, instead of using that same resin we used last time, I'd use just a head cement or I've got, this is a very thin viscosity UV resin, the Solar Res Bone Dry, which I love for any sort of application where you'd usually use head cement. I'm just gonna put a little bit just on the thread wraps, not trying to coat the body on this one. We wanna leave all those fibers free to move. So just going over them quickly. And then again, we'll hit that with our light, lock it all in there. And you'll see this is a nice fly as is, but it doesn't have like a really buggy look yet. So to really accentuate that, I'm just gonna take a, a little dubbing pick here, a little bit of Velcro, and just loosely tease out a few of those fibers. Don't need a ton poking out, but just a few to sort of imitate some legs. I think goes a long ways here, just like so. So this is a cool one where you've got a bit of weight to it, so you can fish this thing by itself if you want, or, you know, still use it with a spoon or whatever else. Um, but especially if you're fishing pressured fish that are a little over the other harder bodied uh, jigs or you know you're fishing really slow if you're fishing really slow the others don't look like much i mean really slow like almost static um, but this thing even when you try to hold it still those little legs are going to move just that little bit and they can be i think a good deal sealer on on finicky fish so this is a great version that you can try that i don't think a lot of ice anglers have out there but fishes really really well so hopefully you enjoyed that. That's three different versions of the classic Simcoe bug, killer on all kinds of pan fish. Uh, through the ice, you can use these in open water season too. Hope you give them a shot. Let us know how you do.